A continuación presentamos el devocional diario traducido al inglés. En español lo puede encontrar de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias por el canal de YouTube. Centro Evangélico Vida Nueva. Dejamos más información abajo en la descripción del vídeo. Good morning my dear brethren and friends and welcome as every morning to our daily devotional. We give thanks to the Lord because every morning we can find ourselves and meet ourselves and start the day with his our God asking for his blessing and presenting our lives and presenting every activity every word and everything we're going to do every day to the Lord in prayer. Today we're going to reflect around a verse that is found in the second letter that the apostle Paul wrote to the brethren in Corinth in chapter 3. Verse 6, and the title of this devotional today will be Ministers of a New Pact. And the word of the Lord says, Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. The word new pact for us is uh, an expression that is tremendously important. When we speak about the Old Testament or the New Testament, really that word is not correct because a testament is an official document that somebody left that he knows that sooner or later he will die and he wants to leave his last will in writing, his inheritance, his children, his friends, his wife or whoever. To call the first part of the Bible from Genesis to the book of Malachi, the Old Covenant or the Old Testament, is a mistake because God did not change his mind. First of all, God was not going to die ever. He's eternal. He lives from eternity to eternity. But then later he repents and he has to make a new testament because it seems like he made a mistake. Maybe he wants to add some things that he forgot to write the first time in the Old Testament. The real thing will be to talk about pacts, covenants. He made a covenant with a people called Israel through which uh, he was preparing them for the coming of the Messiah. But the new pact, the new covenant, that relationship no longer on a national, on a personal level was prophesied by the prophet Jeremiah. And in the last supper, the last night that the Lord spends with his disciples is when he establishes that new covenant that is broader, deeper, about better promises. I repeat, not about a national relationship, but on a relationship that is personal, a relationship that man can and should have with his God, with his creator every day of his life. Just as in the Old Covenant or Old Testament, as some may call, there were ministers and there were Levites, priests, and they were also a high priest that were the ones who taught the law and who taught the statutes, the commandments, the precepts, the teachings of that Old Covenant. Simply because you were born in the tribe of Levi, Levi you were part of, the, of that group. But in the New Covenant or New Testament, if you prefer, each and every one of us are already part of those privileges, of those honors, of those tremendous blessings of being able to preach and spread the Word of God, whether you are or not a preacher or a pastor. But in addition to all that, God has raised up, God has constituted and trained people with knowledge of the sacred scriptures, with wisdom, um, with uh, experience, so that they can help us and minister and be able to know what are the repercussions of this new covenant that God has made with each and every one of us. When it says that the letter kills and the Spirit gives life, it does not refer to the word of the Lord. It is an interpretation that is totally erroneous. When some people, even I have heard it say that it's not necessary, the studying of the Word of God, it is not necessary the preparation because in the end, the letter kills. But what they're referring is to the law. 
In the law, there was no mercy. In the new covenant, there is mercy. There is grace. You remember when they brought that woman, according to the Jews, caught in the very act of adultery? They knew that the law ordered to kill that those people. However, the Lord Jesus Christ said, okay, the law says that. But in order to fulfill the law, one has to be free of sin and has to be in conditions that none of you are in. The one that is without sin throws the first stone against her. And it says that everyone felt addressed and everyone threw the, the stone to the floor and left. The Lord is not that he turns his blind eye to the sin. It's not that he was allowing that this woman would commit that sin. It is that in the new covenant there is something called grace, something called forgiveness, mercy. In the Old Testament or covenant, the people had to go all the time with innocent animals that were slaughtered and presented as burnt offerings so that their sins would be covered, not forgiven, because the word of the Lord says that the blood of bulls and goats did not forgive sins. They only covered and prepared, let's say, they anticipated the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, a sacrifice that was perfect, that definitely and finally has cleansed us and forgiven and has placed us on a much higher position. Independently of the name of the family of the nation that you belong to or which you have been born, now you can have intimate communion and relationship with God. In the Old Covenant or Old Testament, it was not so. Only the Levites and the priests that were dedicated only to minister to the Lord, they were the privileged ones to be able to enter the atrium, the holy place through the high priest. It was They were the only ones who could have had certain privileges. The rest of the people, where they were depending on them, the rest to see. Unfortunately, there were some people that they, that they feel that they're the only anointed ones, the only privileged ones that have access to the presence of the Lord and to a series of privileges and the rest, uh, like, well, they're little sheep and ignorant ones have to depend on the enlightened ones, on the great anointed ones of the great men of God to be able to receive a crumb, a small blessing. And that is totally flawed, a false, and totally anti-biblical. We are all children of God. We read in some, in some devotions that now we are re royal priesthood, holy nation, people acquired by God so that we can announce the virtues of the one who called us from the darkness to his marvelous light. In addition to that, of being part of this new covenant as sons and children, children of God, we have the privilege of having been called by the Lord to announce those virtues, to teach the people to enjoy their relationship with God. Well, that training does not come from ourselves. By ourselves, we cannot do anything. We give all the glory and all the honor to the Lord, and we thank Him because we know that He is the one who trains us. He is the one who makes us effective people in the kingdom of God. And if there is any merit, it is by the grace of God. It is not because of our wisdom, our charisma, our gift, or experiences. The Lord is the only one, the only one that deserves to take all the honor and all the glory. Because thanks to Him, we can do what we do. And without Him, we're totally lost. Woe to those that they think that because of their influence and the numbers of people they have in their congregations for the title they hold, presidents, or even invented titles that are not even in the Bible, how superintendents, etc., they're capable of doing and achieving the objectives that they have achieved. And nothing could be further from the truth. In any case, after having done everything that the Lord has called us to do, we're going to consider ourselves useless servants as slaves of Jesus Christ, instruments used temporarily by the grace and the mercy of God, but that the people will know that it is the Lord who empowers, it is the Lord who sustains, who strengthens, and who helps us to move forward. So, my dear brethren, let's present our lives and this day that just started to our God so that He will open our eyes and we are able to understand 
the repercussions and the privileges that are extraordinary that flow from that new covenant that was already made 2,000 years ago in the person, in the figure of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks to him, we can now stand And thanks to him, we can continue moving forward and conquering ground and taking the gospel to distant lands, perhaps not in person, but through the force of the influence of the social media. We can continue ministering and bringing hope, and encouragement, and strength to thousands or millions of people, many of whom have already understood what it is to be a son of a daughter of God. Many of you are enjoying the honor and privilege to be called children of God and to be a part of the body of Christ. If you are still living as a beggar, spiritually speaking, if you are not enjoying of this new life, of this relationship with the Lord, I invite you that at this moment, wherever you are, tell him, Lord, I want to know you. I surrender my life to you and recognize that separated from you, I'm lost. And I also humbly ask you, Lord, that you will cleanse my sins, that you will transform my life, and that you will make me a son, a daughter of yours, and that I can begin to walk in victory with the blessing of you every day, and that every day, little by little, I will develop and mature as a believer. So that way, I can also be a useful instrument in your hands, trained and effective in the kingdom, so that through my life, many people can know you. Let's pray, my dear brethren, this morning, presenting our lives to the Lord and putting everything in His hands. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of being part of the new covenant, a covenant of life, of grace, of mercy, a covenant that was carried out thanks to the blood shed on the cross. Thank you because the confirmation of that new covenant was your resurrection. We know that you live. And you continue to transform lives. And you continue to break ties and strongholds. Freeing the captives and giving sight to the blind. I ask you, Lord, that we will enjoy of this new relationship. Of this new communion with our Creator, our Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for the salvation so great that you have given us. That no one and nothing can take away from us. Help us to remain firm. To take care of our salvation with fear and trembling lest we slip away, so we can remain firm and in victory all the days of our lives. Thank you, Lord. We give you for this new day of life. We put everything in your hands with thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. My dear brethren, may the Lord bless you all. I wish you all have a day full of the peace and the blessing of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, so that we can rejoice and be glad in it. I have to tell you that we have no problem or any inconvenience that you share the devotionals, these teachings with your friends, your family members, and contacts. What I believe it is not right is that you, some people are opening in my name or under the name or the title of our ministry, faith pages on Facebook, channels on YouTube, with the excuse that they are spreading the Word of God. And the only thing they do is confuse people. Be very careful, my dear brethren. There are people that are not even believers, and they use our material later to ask for offerings and money. Be very careful. Be prudent. There are many unbelievers that are pretending to be evangelical Christians and pastors and open channels with my devotionals, with the services that we uh, transmit and share in the Canary Islands. And then they ask for offerings and they dedicate themselves to deceiving people, believing that they, it is us. Centro Evangelico Vida Nueva only has one official channel on YouTube. Look always on the number of subscribers that is almost reaching um, a million with the help of the Lord. If you have not done so, I, I encourage you to do it. And we also have a Facebook in Facebook. May the Lord protect us from the evil one and giving thanks and moving forward and, and giving thanks to each one of you also for your prayers, the way you support us. We move forward holding on and trusting in our God. May the Lord bless you, my dear brethren.